Hi everyone. The past few weeks, we have been learning all about matter. We know that matter has mass and matter has, takes up space. We've also talked about changing matter. The one thing we haven't talked about is when we change it, can we change it back? What does that mean? Let's think about it. We took sugar and we dissolved sugar in the water, right? And then we left that for a few days and we had sugar again. We made sugar crystals. That's a reaction that can go back and forth. Could we take those sugar crystals and melt them again? Sure. And could we make sugar crystals again? Yes. That's an example of a reaction that is reversible. It can go back and forth over and over and over again an infinite number of times. Now, let's look at another reaction that is physical. I have a container of ice cubes here. Now, what's going to happen to these ice cubes if I leave them outside on this table for a few hours. They're going to melt. They're going to melt and turn into what? So remember, ice cubes, we learned this in the first lab, ice cubes are made out of, this is water, but it's solid water. Once we let them melt, then that turns into liquid water. Now, Imagine this is all melted and turns into liquid water. And I stick it back in the freezer. What will I have again? Solid water. The shape will change, right? Because once it's a liquid, it's going to take the shape of its container. And if I put it back into the freezer, it will become a solid again. Let's try it. A few hours have passed, and now our solid water has turned into liquid water. We're going to put this back in the freezer and wait a few more hours. Now let's take a look at my water that I placed in the freezer. It has turned into ice. Can you hear the tapping? You can see it is a solid again, but the shape has changed. It has a physical change. And what would happen if I leave this at room temperature? It'll turn into liquid water again. Now what happened to the water as it froze again? It became a solid again. It became ice again changes shape but that's okay it was a reversible reaction we started with liquid water went to solid water back to liquid water to solid water back and forth and back and forth that's an example of something that's reversible now let's do another reaction that you are familiar with baking soda and vinegar i'm going to take two teaspoons of baking soda, which is a solid, remember, it's a powder, has its own shape, that's two teaspoons, and now I'm going to add vinegar, which is a liquid, doesn't have its own shape, takes the shape of its container, and mix the two, and we know this is a chemical reaction, and look, I have bubbles and fizzing, and I've created a new gas, right, and where's my gas going? going everywhere. Now this reaction, can you guess, is this reversible or irreversible? This is not reversible. This is irreversible. I can't get the bubbles back. I can't change this back to baking soda and vinegar because something new has been created. 
the baking soda and vinegar have been changed. This is an example of a irreversible reaction. It is not reversible. Now, let's have some fun with our matter. Right here, I have a mixing bowl, a whisk, flour, eggs, milk, and baking soda. All the ingredients for a pancake. What I'm going to do is, everything's been pre-measured, I'm going to pour my flour in, I'm going to pour my milk in, I'm going to take my egg, crack my egg in, and I'm going to measure my baking soda. to whisk, whisk it around and mix it all together. It's all ready to go. Not quite, almost ready to go. I need to add something to this so that it becomes edible. What do I need to add? Heat. I have to go put it on the stove and cook it. And while I'm doing that, can you make a prediction? Do you think that this reaction is reversible or irreversible? Remember, I added eggs, baking soda, sh uh, milk, and flour. What do you think? We're gonna cook it up in a minute. We're gonna do something else at the same time. I have a container here filled with many, many different crayons. Now, I'm going to add heat to this too. I'm going to go put this on the stove safely and see what happens when I add heat to my crayons. Now I am in the kitchen with a pan on my stove. I'm going to pour in my pancake batter and let's see what happens. See it sizzling. We are cooking it. Pancake is done. Let's go observe. Here we have our final product, my pancake. Remember I added eggs, flour, milk, and baking soda. And I have a pancake. It smells really good and I'll open it up. Can I find the eggs in here? Can I separate the eggs? No. Can I take the flour and separate it again? No. The baking soda, the milk, they are now all one. We've changed our eggs and flour into a pancake. Is this a reversible or irreversible reaction? Irreversible. I cannot get my eggs back. I can't get my milk or flour or baking soda back. Now let's try adding some heat to our crayons. You'll see I have a few sticks of crayons. They have their own shape. They are solids, green and blue and purple. And let's see what happens when I add heat to my crayons. We'll wait for just a few minutes.
my crayons are still melting, slow to melt, but made a little bit of progress at the bottom. We'll keep waiting. Now that my crayons have all melted, you can see I have turned it into a liquid. The colors have all mixed. And we're going to now leave it on the counter and see what happens once it cools down. So the crayon that was a solid has turned into a liquid, but the shape is definitely different right now. It doesn't have a shape, right? It's a liquid. Now I've let my crayon cool and let's take it out and see. Well, definitely looks different than it did before. The shape is different. The colors are all mixed up, but still have a crayon. We went from a solid to a liquid inside of this little beaker. And the only thing that changed was the shape because the liquid took the shape of its container. And once it solidified, it was still in this container. And now we have a circular shape crayon. Next, I want to do my favorite experiment. I think it's yours too. I'm going to put on safety goggles. If you do want to try this, make sure there is an adult with you. Some of these materials may be a little bit hard to find, but you could probably do it if you try. You're going to need a large bottle. I'm using a soda bottle, but any bottle will work just fine. I'm going to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide first. Next, I'm going to add some dish soap. And to this, I'm going to add some yeast that I've dissolved in a little bit of warm water. But before I do, it's always fun to make things pretty and colorful. I'm going to add a little bit of blue food coloring on one side and a little bit of red food coloring on the other side. And let's see what happens when we pour yeast in. Wow, what does that look like? Looks just like toothpaste. Aquafresh, the red and the blue stripes going all around. Endless reaction going all over the place. Now this is called elephant toothpaste. And let's see how much longer before it stops. It keeps going and going and going. Now, this is a reaction that I'm going to bring my hand near and I actually feel heat coming out of it. That heat is a sign that something new was created. This definitely was a chemical reaction, but what I want to ask you is, is this reversible or irreversible? What a mess, but so much fun at the same time, right? Matter is so much fun. If you do want to try this at home, please do make sure that an adult is present to help you. 
and always make sure to wear safety goggles to protect your eyes when you are conducting the experiment. Now, was this reaction reversible or irreversible? Can I get my hydrogen peroxide and my yeast and my soap separated again? I can't. This was an example of an irreversible reaction. Another hint that I know is irreversible is that I know this is a chemical reaction. Feel the bottom of the pan, it's hot. When heat is released, that means that it's a chemical reaction. Chemical reactions most of the time are irreversible. Now, do not touch the foam, it is a chemical. It can be harsh on your skin, but you can touch the bottom of the pan. Or if you have gloves and you wanna wear gloves and touch it just to feel the texture and the heat, that's okay too. But again, always with an adult present. Now we learned that matter and chemistry can be very messy, but they can also be very, very tasty. Let's conduct our own chemistry experiment and see if we can change matter and if it's reversible or irreversible by making ice cream. For this lab, you will need two small Ziploc bags, two large Ziploc bags, plenty of ice, heavy whipping cream, vanilla, salt, sugar, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. We're going to start with the two small Ziploc bags, and we are going to measure one tablespoon of sugar in each small Ziploc bag. One in the first bag. One in the second bag. Next, you're going to add a quarter a cup of heavy whipping cream to each bag. Then you will need a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla in each bag as well. Make sure the bags are sealed really well. You don't want anything to leak through. Both bags are identical, but you give them a little mix, but we're going to treat the bags a little bit differently. Now that both bags are sealed, you're going to take your two larger Ziploc bags and your large Ziploc bags are going to get four cups of ice each. Next, you are going to add half a cup of salt. Next, you're going to add half a cup of salt to only one of the bags that have the ice in them. Pour that in. Then your cream, vanilla, and sugar mixture go inside and seal the bag. And then you have another bag that has just ice and no salt and you're going to place your other Ziploc bag 
inside as well and seal make sure the bags are sealed really really well and your hands might get cold in this process so you might want to wear gloves but now your job is to shake both bags for five minutes while you're shaking i want you to observe the temperature difference and i want you to observe and see if the ice cubes are melting at the same rate. Now remember, we have the same number of ice cubes, the same amount of ice cubes, same amount ice cubes in each bag. Go ahead and shake for five minutes. Five minutes have passed and let's look at our bags. Here's bag one with just the ice. And you can see my ice cubes are still intact. A little bit of melting. And let's look at the bag with the ice and the salt. Oh my God, it's so much colder. And look at all this water. This one melted so much faster than the other bag and it is way colder. You can actually feel the difference by just putting your hand on them. Many, many, many degrees differences. Now the most important part, let's look at the ice cream. Let me take out the bag from the one that had just the ice inside and let's look inside and well, it's still a liquid. Bring it out. It has not solidified, solidified at all. It's still a liquid. Let's put that to the side. Let's open up the bag with the salt. And wow, well, look at that. Oh my goodness, I have ice cream. It's a solid. Let me scoop some out with my Spoon. That is definitely a solid, not a liquid. Well, let's talk about what happened here. We had two bags and these Ziploc bags, we put identical materials, cream, sugar, and vanilla. These bags had ice but one had salt. The one that had salt in it made ice cream. The one that didn't have salt left with the same ingredients I did before and it's still a liquid, right? What did the salt do? Well, it's colder than the other one. We need it to be really cold to be able to make ice cream. The salt actually lowered the freezing point so that the temperature was able to get even colder than ice. How do you get colder than ice? You add salt. That makes the temperature go even lower. And that's why I was able to make solid ice cream here. Now the ice cream that I have made here, this is an irreversible reaction, but it's a solid right now. Could I turn this solid into a liquid again? Is that part reversible? It is. What would I have to add? Heat, just leave it out, squeeze it with my hand, a little bit of heat, and I would have a liquid again. Physical changes are usually reversible. Chemical changes are irreversible. Go ahead and try this at home. Make sure you have the supervision of an adult with you.